Yes, good morning, uh, Karen, and uh, all our viewers out there. Good morning as well. All right. What action should the Philippines take after, number one, the presence of close to 200 Chinese ships in the Julian Felipe Reef, now down to nine, and number two, um, uh, a Chinese craft actually harassing uh, a local fishing boat with local media in the boat? Well, as, uh, as I had... R-E-E-Z, uh, uh, within our EEZ. Yes. As I had uh, said uh, several days ago when uh, news broke out about the harassment, um, the Philippines should pursue diplomatic action. And uh, I'm, I'm happy uh, that uh, the, the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, has summoned uh, the Chinese ambassador because that's one of the, the things that I was uh, offering as an option. Yeah. And um, we must pursue this, uh, of course, in a peaceful means and mm-hmm. uh, in accordance to what the UNCLOS uh, provides. Yeah. So we, we are doing that now. Yeah, we are. I, I think we, we've been issuing diplomatic protests. The, sec- the good secretary has been issuing, I think, almost every day. Yes. Uh, okay. but, but beyond that, I, I think the country should uh, pursue or and proceed with maritime pat- patrols in the area. Okay. Um, as we have experienced uh, recently, um, on, on a, on a Philippine uh, Air Force plane uh, was conducting maritime patrols and it was even challenged by the Chinese. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the Air Force plane, the Philippine uh, Air Force plane, um, asserted uh, its right to uh, conduct patrols. And I think we should be continuing to do that. Uh, This is to back up the statement of our Department of uh, National Defense Secretary, um, Delfin Lorenzana, uh, when he he basically told the Chinese to get out. Mm -hmm. And uh, those words should be backed up, not just by the diplomatic action, but I think uh, the exercise of our rights um, in ensuring that the exclusive economic zone of, of the Philippines is, is protected and asserted. Okay. Uh, just yesterday, um, former uh, Senator uh, Hillary Clinton, former U.S. Senator Hillary Clinton, was interviewed by Rappler, and she said that she fears that the Philippines might become a subject of China. So this is what her her comment was. She says, I worry about the Philippines basically becoming a subject of China through financial investments, through the buying of influence, through the undermining of institutions. I think there's a real danger that left unchecked. The Philippines, no matter who the leader is, would find itself increasingly unable to act without China's Chinese approval. Are you seeing right now essentially a quid pro quo? I mean, it's often been said that there is no relation between the West Philippine Sea situation and the vaccine situation. But do you have fears, Congressman, that there is? Well, I see that as a possibility. Um that uh, because of the donation of vaccines to the to the Philippines, uh, China might uh, try to um, influence uh, decisions by the Philippine government, by the state, uh, with regard to the issues on the West Philippine Sea. Um, th- that's why when when there was a talk about uh, donations of vaccines going to the armed forces, I expressed my apprehension on that mm-hmm. um, because we cannot. Uh, we, we cannot set aside um, our concern about the West Philippine Sea. This goes into the future. The future generations of Filipinos would be affected if we make uh, decisions there that, that, that do not assert and protect our sovereign sovereign rights. Um, so I think we should just proceed um, uh, treating these two issues um, parallel. That's that's my, my just just my opinion. Um, of course, we engage China in uh, securing vaccines, um, whether it's by donation or by procurement. Uh, Of course, better if it's by procurement because it's just a business transaction. But I think we should still maintain uh, our position in asserting our rights over our exclusive economic zone. Um, We are, uh, I'm I'm confident that uh, there are other allies who would be willing to help us Mm -hmm. on, on both issues. Okay. The West Philippine Sea and even the pandemic response. Were you surprised? I mean, some observers 
um, were happy, but were surprised at what they felt was a policy shift in this administration when uh, Secretary Lorenzana essentially spoke out against China with the sh ships in Julian Felipe Reef and also Secretary Luxin backing that up. People had questioned where, I mean, why the sudden shift? Do you see this as having the blessing of President Duterte? Yes, I would, I would make that assumption that it has a blessing of the president. Uh, these are two major cabinet positions we are talking about, foreign affairs and defense. And uh, I think it's it's been there uh, all the time. I mean, the, the concern about uh, the West Philippine Sea and I think that the straw that broke the camel's back is uh, the swarming of uh, Chinese maritime militia vessels. Imagine more than 200 vessels uh, out there in our EEZ. Although, uh, as, as Secretary Loxin said, there are only nine vessels left in Ayung and Shoal. They had just actually dispersed uh, all over the exclusive economic zone. So that is still a major concern as far as I'm concerned. That's why um, uh, calling in or summoning the, the ambassador, I think, really was the appropriate thing to do. Okay. What kind of power, summoning the ambassador is uh, the appropriate thing to do, but what kind of power would Congress have to influence essentially the president and the armed forces uh, and, I mean, and the military as a whole to start maritime patrols in the West Philippine Sea? Well, that, that's a subject of the resolution that I filed, uh, House mm -hmm. Resolution 1707. Uh, first, the, the, for the House to express its condemnation and protest on the actions done by the Chinese and calling on the Department of Defense and the Department of Foreign Affairs to uh, pursue certain activities. Um, of course, the chief architect of foreign policy is the president, but uh, yes. we are hoping that uh, if the House of Representatives or even the Senate comes out with uh, its, its united stand on the matter, uh, it would help give the president some confidence that uh, uh, if he decides to pursue a, a more assertive stance, um, he has the two institutions backing him up. Okay. So I think so, it's essential for, for both houses to express their sense. Uh, so, number one, recommend maritime patrols. Number two, is it time for the Philippines to once again participate in Navy drills uh, conducted it, by the United States? Because the last time I interviewed as Secretary Lorenzana, even after he spoke to his new counterpart, he said it does not mean that the Philippines will join. But that was before the 200 ships swarmed Julian Felipe Reef. Is it now time that the Philippines uh, realign itself? I mean, optics-wise, no? I mean, given that we are a long-time ally, but optics is a different, it, it holds a different message. Yes, we, we, we can clearly see that uh, for a while there, there seems to be a, 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 um, a sort of cooling off of the relationship. Um, but I think really it is time for us to engage our long-time allies and even possibly forge new ones. Yeah. Um, we have the international community uh, uh, sympathetic to our cause. Um, there, there is a new group there called the, the Quad. Uh, that's another option that we can also um, um, participate in or uh -oh. at least engage with. Um, I, I've heard reports that even um, uh, the UK is going to send their new aircraft carrier into the uh, South uh, China Sea. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, France and uh, Germany has likewise done the same. And now yeah. the Americans are very oh. active. So I think it's yeah. really the, the world next step is also. concerned. Yes, it's the next step that we should be taking uh, to make up for the imbalance of military power between China and the Philippines. Obviously, militarily, if we compare the two, uh, the Philippines is way behind. Mm -hmm. But we have the international community on our side. Mm -hmm. So uh, both on the legal front uh, through the Department of Foreign Affairs and on the, mi the, the military front, um, the DND, uh, I, I think we, we can be backed up by um, uh, allies uh, in the international community. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, Hillary Clinton also said, she said, the previous U.S. administration really didn't have any policy about the Philippines. It was one of the many parts of the world they didn't pay attention to, didn't say anything about. So uh, she said it was ill-advised, incoherent policy toward China, uh, enabled over the last few years to strengthen its position over the Asia-Pacific. 
what are you expecting or what do you believe should the U.S. role be in this part of the world? During Obama's time, there was a pivot to Asia. And repeatedly today, you hear China aggressively on Twitter saying, you have no interest in this region. You are, you are you're not a stakeholder, so don't interfere. <laughs> when, what, what, uh, what do you believe? What kind of role do you believe should the U.S. take uh, well, in yeah. the next few years? The, the major issue here is the South China Sea, West Philippine Sea. In other words, the maritime domain, which is an international concern. And that's the very reason why there is UNCLOS. Um, the United States has always played a part globally uh, as some sort of, um, of, of uh, uh, world police. Uh, especially because they are the uh, strong, they have the strongest navy in the world. Uh, they're able to project um, uh, the, the themselves. And uh, the ideals that the United States is pushing for, I think, gives them a, a role in, in, in this uh, part of the world. Uh, and they have that policy or they have that uh, the, um, the program of uh, a free and open uh, Indochina, uh, in Indo-Pacific uh, region. Uh, and uh, based on the alliances that they have, like for example, in the Philippines, we have the Mutual Defense Treaty. Mm. Uh, we think that they have they have a role, they have a, a, a part in, in, in to play uh, in this in maintaining peace and stability in this part of the country of the of the world. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, you have observers also saying, of course, you said uh, it's time to increase, not just increase, not to have maritime patrols in our EEZ. Uh, some have said, let's not expect other countries to protect us if we can't even show that we are fighting for our own territory. Well, we have. Uh, that's that's one of the reasons why I, I filed that resolution to send a message to um, the world that. Um, there are sectors in the country uh, who are concerned with this, of course, and uh, we're expecting that government should take uh, a principal role. And um, the actions taken by the DFA and the DND, um, I think, would uh, manifest that. So uh, we are step. I, I, I feel that we are stepping up right now uh, to, to to tell the world that we are concerned, but we have some sort of can handicap militarily and. And that is why engaging uh, these alliance with these alliances and uh, other concerned parties uh, would be a boost. Mm -mm. All right. On that note, Congressman Rufi Biazon, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Is there anything you'd like to add before we go? Well, uh, of course, we, uh, as I said, uh, there should be a, a united voice. So it's not just people in government like us, but we hope that the Filipino people themselves would voice out their concern about these intrusions into uh, the Philippines, uh, EEZ. And uh, again, I thank you for this opportunity to uh, voice out these, uh, these opinions. All right. Would you also encourage more media presence in the in in our uh, exclusive economic zone? If you if you notice from the beginning, the statement of the of the military was um, leaning towards uh, what were you doing there, media, to Shara Zambrano and team, and then moved on now to we want the media to cover more of the West Philippine Sea. <laughs> Yes, um, probably they would, the media would just uh, give notice to uh, concerned authorities. And they, they did. Continue. They did. Yes, so, so they, they did. did. Just continue that. And um, just so that if an incident happens, um, um, authorities can easily respond knowing that there are people there. But I think presence of media is part of asserting our rights. Mm -hmm. uh, it is our right uh, to, um, to be there in the exclusive economic zone. So it's not just military people there, but um, an institution like the media to report on what's going on. All right. On that note, Congressman Rufi Biazon, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. You take care of yourself and you stay safe, sir. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much.